Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Esme, also known as Esmeralda Avedo. If I, I think I made a meal out of your name there. <laughs> we'll just, okay, Acevedo. Acevedo. And uh, she is going to be talking about content box themes. And she is not only an amazing graphic designer, she's also a Cold Fusion developer. And she learned a lot about SQL and Cold Fusion and Coldbox and JavaScript and goodness knows what else. So that she could create amazing themes uh, for Content Box. And some of the ones that come bon bundled with Content Box, she created. So we're going to be talking about how she did that and the important thing in Theme UI and how do she, how you can create an amazing UI and what difference that makes. And we'll look at some of the creative things she's done with themes, not just your regular theme, but things that are a different way of presenting information. And how you present the settings to the user makes an effect on the usability. So welcome, Esme. Thank you for having me. So you started out being a graphic designer, and then you started working with all this content box and other things at Autis. And now you've learned a whole bunch of Cold Fusion as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, um, my first experience with Cold Box and Content Box, it was my senior project for school. And I had to crash course it because I didn't really know anything much about it. And that's how I came introduced with it. I read so much documentation, thank goodness, uh, Lewis had it uh, posted up there. And from that, I developed my senior project. And within a week, I had it going. And this is somebody that didn't know anything about it. So yeah, that's uh, great. And being that little I had of cold fusion knowledge, I, it helped me understand what was going on. Cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think cold fusion is pretty easy to learn. Uh, for someone who's coming from design background who knows HTML. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to get into it. Yes. And now you know both sides of the, the thing. You know the, the coding side and the design side. So that's a very powerful combination. Yeah. Uh, well, first uh, I, used, I was uh, only doing the design and um, my layouts, my basically is like, okay, I would design and I pass it on to the programmer. But sometimes when I was not getting my design looking like what it was on the JPEG. I like, so what's going on here? So that's what drove me to go learn that. So yeah, and just that, then I became, I, then I started doing the, not only the design, but also I started building the site itself, like the UI of it. So that's, um, uh, it was a good transition there. So now I know both sides of it. So when you're building a theme, what, what is important in, you know, to consider when you're creating a theme for Content Box? Well, first, the, um, the one thing I, right now, I mean, that everything's mobile also, I wanna make sure it's responsive. So I have to make sure um, my, the CSS, the, lay, the layout itself, it's responsive. Uh, then I have, it would be easy to understand, easy to use, easy to apply. So that's when I develop it. Um, the settings, if there are multiple settings, for example, one of the themes has a slideshow or a newsfeed, social settings, not everyone wants that. So I have to make sure it's like, I give them an option to turn it off and on, or even also the aspect of where placing the picture, is it gonna the left and the center on the right? So those are just, um, just my purpose is just basically making it easier for the user mm. and give them a, giving them more options than just having a basic header and a footer and just the middle section for the content. Yeah. yeah, because that would be a pretty boring theme if you did that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, right now, um, the main thing uh, one is making sure it's responsive because you want your, mm -hmm. your website to be. And for people who haven't done responsive design before, that means it resizes automatically and in smart ways and the widgets move around. And yes, or, yeah. based on the screen size. And also, I mean, um, the ones I designed for Arctis, the uh, for Content Box, there are five of them, and they're all based on Bootstrap. So basically, mm -hmm. it's Bootstrap's tied in, and that so therefore the developer that picks it up could actually customize it or continue using the you know the the CSS from there. Mm. So when you're doing, you said you you have different options in the UI. People can turn off sections or. Or whatever and this is in the user settings so they don't have the end users who are doing this doesn't have to know how to code 
but right. you have to write a bunch of code to make that happen, I'm guessing. Yes, and it's really simple. Using the um, themes CFC, that's where you add your, your settings. And now what the new release has also is grouping, meaning that before they were just, um, there was no way, let's say for example, in one section I have a, um, a picture and to turn off and on a colors and all that. Um, let's say four settings based on one section before they were all run into each other. So now we have actually categories of settings. So this is categories for this section, section A, or I mean, I'm just being very simple here, generic. So section A has five settings and now those are, um, they, they're grouped inside, the developer adds them to that theme CFC. And also another, um, another thing is uh, we, the, we had the names of the setting, but we, there was no way the user knew exactly, okay, so what this is for. There was no instruction, there was no description. So what we added for the developer is, you know, the help, you know, okay, this is goes here. Or if it, uh, like, for example, there's, this is the name of the theme based on the color, but it actually has the color, the actual color swatches. So now we have a modal uh, window to, to, for the developer to add a, a more, in, in, you know, more um, detailed description of what that setting does. Mm. And that makes it easier for the developer and also easier for the people, for the, the content editors. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And um, I think believe it's in the next one, there will be, uh, um, where they could actually select images from the back. So we're still working on that. So color swatching, I think that's already available. I mean, color picker, but yeah, we're constantly adding more. I mean, the point is to make it easier on the user. Mm. Using so the it, it, it is creating a theme something any Cold Fusion developer could do or? Oh yes, of course. I mean, for one, me that I didn't have very much <laughs> Um, very much experience only I ended up busting out a whole project on based on that and that was one probably content box early early release like when they still only had layouts so it was not even called themes they didn't have any options and I was able to develop a theme myself for that so now with the new um, new options new I mean the new organization is much easier so yes and and, and then um, we have a uh, documentation also and it's very simple and the, of course the our workshop during the conference um, not only that it's one thing reading it from the you know blog post or you know uh, documentation but now uh, Gavin and I will be there to answer questions and show you exactly how to build a theme so you're talking about the full day workshop on Wednesday yes and part of it will be building themes on them yeah. And, and just pe people who don't know, Gavin Pickin is the evangelist for Content Box. So. Yep. I'm assisting him on that one. <laughs> You're the assistant evangelist. <laughs> the assistant evangelist, yes. <laughs> so we'll be there so, and on Wednesday. Right. And helping people go through some code and explaining all this stuff. So yes. That, that is great. So you mentioned that there was a shift from layouts to themes. So what, what's the difference between a layout and a theme? Well, right now, I mean, a theme is, um, is more following with conventions now. A theme, it consists of the components, it consists of the layout, which is basically, all right, this layout consists of a header, a footer, um, a diff, okay, so let me go back, okay. <laughs> All right, so there's views. There, there are those fields, which is a little chunk, like for example, the view of the footer, the header. But let's say, let's say you have two types of headers, right? So this is header A, header B, and B. So each of those are views. A layout will consist, okay, this layout, let's say the homepage has header A, but layout two has header B. So now, now in the theme, it consists of those two components plus the CSS, the JavaScript, and the modules within that um, that's needed to build that theme. Let's say the theme also has um, a slideshow, a news feed, a Twitter feed, and, but this is just based on the theme. It's not, it's not on the entire, you know, the, because on the content box site, the content box site have multiple themes, the themes have multiple layouts, the layouts has different kind of views. So, and before it was called layouts, but we switched it up to be more um, complying with the naming conventions out there. Mm -hmm. 
right because things like wordpress have themes where yes. there's hundreds of different ones people can download and, right. and i guess this you want the same idea with content box that you and other people in the content box community create themes and and share yeah. them out or make them for sale yeah you know, layout also has a sidebar maybe a layout has a you know a left bar and a sidebar in the middle so that's what basically we left the, that's the layout itself so that's the difference between layouts and themes now mm. and you mentioned styles in there is that part of themes or you're talking about css styles or yes well that's what will make the theme you know pretty soon we have a color uh, let's say this theme it's called Earth. I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna use it because I'm an outdoorsy. <laughs> <laughs> Earthy, you know, like so. I use earth tones on this theme. You know, let's say I, uh, so my CSS, my swatches, all that, I, and I use SAS in order to compile all my CSS. And so um, I use the variables. What, you know, I'm sorry. What What is SAS? I've, for people who haven't met that, that's a CSS tool, or yeah, it's to. Um, Basically, like let's say I have, a, I would use this. I'm um, gonna use very simple. So I have a color I use constantly throughout. Instead of I just now just make variables. So SAS basically compiles it and then also places outputs the regular style sheet instead of using the variables myself. I mean, instead oh, of okay. So that's right. why I mean by that. So, um, um, but that's what I use. So basically, I pick my colors um, for that theme. Uh, let's say font styles, um, any dimension, any sizes. Uh, so that's what is, I use the style. That style sheet is for the, that theme. So yeah, that's a very important component of that theme itself. It makes, it, it makes the look. So and what that's where I specialize in. <laughs> right. And, you know, the look makes for better usability, I'm assuming. Yes. Exactly. So and, and also yeah. of course you use the CSS to you know use your uh, media queries. So like say I use this set to target the mobile, um, the certain resolution, this uh, this other this other set for that. So yes, that's what that's very important. The style sheet part of the theme. Mm. Mm. And then if you wanted to change from one theme to another, is that you just change out the theme or do you have to do other things because it's connected in with the code somehow? No, it's actually very simple to switch it off. Um, you go to if the options in content box, you have active theme, which is the theme that you have. And let's say you want to have another themes uh, you download from Forgebox. Um, then you go to uh, themes and either you already have it there or you actually download it from Forgebox and you just switch themes. Then nothing is tied. Everything's uh, on its own. Comp I mean, everything's in, like, so, you know, in its own box. So um, you deactivate it. Uh, nothing stays. Uh, then you could activate the next theme. So it's that simple. You're selecting so it's it. Kind of Right, it's plug and play. You just yes. pick the new one, and it picks up all the new stuff. Exactly. And then, where where do all those theme settings get saved? You know, you said you have settings that turn features on and off, but where's that? If you change out a theme in and out, where where's all that info stored as to what how the theme is configured? So, in the database, it's stored. It's stored, but it's following the theme name. So let's say, for example, um, well, the content is separate, but the settings themselves, they're saved in the database based on um, the theme name. So like mm -hmm. that, there's no conflict. Right. And then for the settings, do you, do you have to set those by hand in the code or there's a UI or how does that work with the theme? Well, the developer will set them up in the th theme CFC. Mm hmm yeah, and then um, based on uh, there's a code used. Let's say I want to use the setting on the on the home page, then I set it up on the code for the layout or the view, calling that mm -hmm. specific setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you you design the UI for those settings. So we, I what have you done to improve the UI for those things? Well, right now the um, the major part was organizing the theme settings and giving, giving the instructions and um, mm -hmm. the help for the user. So um, that was the major part that we did. And also right now it's the, the web, 
we're hoping to have uh, next is the where you could pick uh, images from the settings. Mm. Right now, okay. right right now, what we have is basically you have to actually put in the URL instead of actually selecting it from the media. So we're working on that. Mm -hmm. are, are there any other things that makes for an amazing theme UI? Um, the artistic. <laughs> <laughs> the artistic <laughs> part. part. The artistic part. Uh, no, um, but, I mean the, my process is basically first I set it up and let's say and um, what I usually use the fireworks or Photoshop, right? And then from there, you know, that's uh, okay. So that's why I come up with the layout. And then from there, let's say I want, you know, each, each, of, each one is a component. I break it apart. And then from there, then I use this, the CSS to, set, uh, to say, okay, so I want these options. And let's say, for example, I want, the, I want to give the, you, actually, I did it with a few, I, all of them. I gave them different colors. Um, I, I gave uh, different color swatches. So, for example, I, uh, once one is uh, blue, one is uh, green. So on the settings, I say, okay, what, how do you want your color, your header? What color do you want for your header? So they, they could change it um, based on that setting in the back. So now, I mean, of course, as, uh, the developer could add different colors or so different settings to use different uh, CSS uh, calls on that. Uh, but the user only has to say, okay, I want green, I want blue. So uh, mm. it's easy for the developer to add them. It's also easy for the user to set them up. What else do you like about themes and content box? It's, well, for one, first of all, it's so easy to set up. That's one major thing. Um, also, I do like uh, the fact that content store, is a, you could store different content without using data, the database yourself. You know, you set up, like for example, the, I want a news feed. So I set up a category called news and the content. And then myself, by building my themes, like I could say, I want this category to show up on this theme. So that's why I love the fact that I don't have to go and, you know, do the programming as well. I could just do it by, by calling the content store. Mm. And I, you know, I've read that there are also modules you can add to themes. Yes. Yes. Um, a module could actually have widgets. So, uh, mm -hmm. for example, for contentboxcms.org, I ended up doing a module which um, stores uh, and which puts a widget that adds a uh, animated GIF on there. That's how simple it is. So um, this <laughs> module, <laughs> so now you could add an image and it's, it puts it an animated GIF on the page itself. But this module itself is only for that theme. It won't be, uh, if they switch themes, it won't be there. So um, the mod, so what I'm saying is like, if you want just something specific for this theme, it, you could just build it for that and package it to show up on your theme. Hmm. And I hear there are also events in themes. Why would you want to use an event? Well, well for example, um, one of the themes I did, I, uh, I had to, uh, back to using the content store, I needed to, I needed an, uh, I gave the option to the user, you want this image on the left or on the right, right? So then I had to set up a, a custom field in that content store P, uh, entry, left, right, basically saying image position, left or right. So instead of having the user add the custom field to the category of the contents that, that in those entries, what I said, okay, on activation of the theme, of this theme, or build, um, set, up, set up the custom fields, basically content bags did it on, for me on that on that event. That sounds powerful to have um, yes. because you don't have to like go in and change the, the code in the core of code box. You can yeah. hook into those events. Exactly. So it's like when it's listening for events and I want this code there. So it's inserting it there without, that makes it much easier. Is there anything else you want to share about the talk that you and Gavin are doing? Um, as far as the workshop or the session, well, um, we will be building, um, not only showing uh, how to build a, a site, but also we'll be showing how to transform an old site 
to from um, a legacy site to using content box and building this the look that they have with or you know we're using customizing a theme from content box so, cool yeah well, sounds exciting. So I've got some other questions not related to Content Box. Let's move to those. Um, I noticed in your bio, you said that climbing mountains helps you code better. And I'd love this, you to tell us a little bit more about that. <laughs> well, I would love to. <laughs> so I love hiking. I love the outdoors. And you know, sometimes you get a block and um, you need to clear out the mind. So what do I do the best? Go hike a mountain. And I mean, it hurts. It's painful. And, and you only, it's just you're on the path. And I, it's just, I mean, you have the thoughts with yourself. So it's next thing you know, I'm thinking, oh, I could have done that. Or I do this. So I'm, I want to come back, reach the mountain. I conquered it. I come back with a solution to work. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's great. A great yeah. tip. And for those people who don't have mountains, maybe a walk outside in a park would exactly. work as well. Hey, I went to the highest peak in Nebraska, and trust me, it was kind of flat. <laughs> and it still worked out better. All so, right. Yeah, any, any nature walk is great. Mm. And then why are you proud to use Cold Fusion? Well, it was easy uh, for me to pick it up. I, and actually, I was uh, right out of school, and I was hired by a company that had was programming cold fusion and i have tasted php but i i keep coming back to cold fusion it's just so uh, it was very easy for me and now that they added uh, was had cf script that was uh, more like um and also since i had the object oriented now they're gearing more to that side so i really like it the fact they have components and it, it's just um i was more familiar with it and uh it was a census um associated with java which also is my background when I went to school. So that's why I stayed with that. Cool. And what would it take to make Cold Fusion more alive this year? Probably putting out the word on it, more, more uh, classes on it, more training. I mean, I know Ortis is doing quite a bit on that, but that'll be um, I mean, more support for it. That'll be um, to show that there's a bigger community out there helping each other. That'll be great. Yeah, that's a, a great thought. Is there anything you personally could do that would help in this regard? Um, I could become more active in the community. I'm just new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, um, I'm already part of the box team on Slack. And uh, that's how people could reach me too. And like I said, I'm new to this. And if, I'm, if I could help anybody with my, with, I'm, I'm in there. Uh, yes, it is. I had a lot of uh, people helping me with building when I was building my project. Even now, I still uh, I'm helping out Gavin. I mean, it's a great community among us here. So if I could help anybody else, um, I'm willing to do that. Even if I can, I know I could refer somebody else in the team. Cool. So what are you looking forward to in the Into the Box conference? One major thing is, uh, oh, it's one thing uh, I'm trying, I'm starting to integrate Vue.js into uh, my designs and my uh, UI. So I know there's someone giving a talk on that. So I'm looking forward to that. And also just networking with the, everybody and attending the, all the developers, designers, anybody that's there. So I just love to hear people's point of view or you know, ideas, get, a, some, get inspired. So I'm really looking forward to it. Great. And of course, sharing this, what I know. My, giving that design <laughs> twist to the conference there too. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, I look forward to meeting you at the conference. So if people wanted to uh, reach you further, how could they best do that? Uh, through Slack, through the Boxing channel. I'll be as I'm available there. I okay. Don't, I don't have a Twitter yet <laughs> or uh, LinkedIn yet, but there's a, a Slack will be the best right now. Fabulous. So, Box team. Well, we'll the box team on Slack. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. we'll include the URL for that in the show notes. Thanks so much for telling us all about themes and content box. Esme. Oh, you're welcome. Looking forward to meet you too.